So the new year has begun. The 4th of January is today. And we are the women of women matters of the wisdom factory. And we are from all over the world. And before we start, we want to explore intentions for this year. Before we start, we do a check in so everybody can say where they are and maybe a little bit longer because we have Lucinda today, the first time. And so you might get to know us a little bit better, Lucinda, and we might get to know you a little bit better. Um, Gertraud, you start, okay? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, Happy New Year to everybody. And I wish a wonderful one. Um, I'm Gertraud from Germany, middle, north of Frankfurt. <coughs> Sorry. And um, I'm a coach trainer. And my topic is appreciation. Yeah, and what happened? Um, Today is the due date for my niece to come. <laughs> so I'm expecting, so to say, I'm an expecting aunt. And um, yeah, I had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas time till New Year's Eve with my daughters. They came here, not all of them, but two. And we had a great time together. And yesterday I gave myself a treat to meditate from morning eight to night, nine o'clock, uh, 19, seven o'clock. Yeah. So it was intense and wonderful. And today I'm, I'm integrating. <laughs> so that's how I am here. And I pass on to Monia. Happy New Year, sisters and brothers somewhere. Uh, I'm Monia, I live in Vienna, Austria. And we had a quiet New Year, less rockets than uh, last year, except for our British uh, tenants on the top floor penthouse who probably celebrates Brexit. That's what I think, because they just didn't care for any regulations that were given out, no rockets or anything. No, they just, okay. So this is my political statement. Uh, personally, we had a very easygoing Christmas. We split up the children and uh, New Year's and yeah, and we have now a lot of talk about vaccination in Austria. So this is really the top topic. And uh, I, a friend of mine just got vaccinated against the flu. And in, next week she will be vaccinated against uh, pneumococcum. No, it's uh, everybody as he wants. And I had that second, uh, vaccination about 15 years ago and I don't know whether you have to refresh it or just uh, if it still carries on. So everything is rather vague and it will be an interesting year. I pass on to Beatrice. Hello, um, are we just checking in? Sorry, I was a little bit late. Um, so did we see, we see, we didn't see each other after Christmas, that's right. No, okay. I'm, <laughs> I love all the nods and shakes. Um, so we uh, we had a. So I'm Beatrice. <laughs> I'm in New York, Brooklyn, um, and uh, we had a really actually wonderful uh, Christmas time. Um, I, as an event planner, uh, <laughs> I couldn't help myself, and I made a whole uh, agenda. Um, and itinerary <laughs> for for our family uh, for Zoom because we couldn't be together in person this year. Um, and we bought all the same ingredients and cooked all the same food and opened gifts on Zoom. And um, I even got a 
3D, 3D puzzles of animals that we could build together. I've sent one to myself and sent one to my mother. And um, anyway, it was, I think it's actually going to be a holiday that goes down in, in the, the history, well, the personal history books, the memory books, <laughs> um, maybe more so than some of the holidays, regular holidays when we're in person, because this one was special and different and um, it was, you know, sad that we couldn't hug each other and be in the same room, but I feel like we really got to do all of the things that we usually do in the holidays, um, and it really felt like we were together, and even though it was in a strange, strange way, a new way. Um, and then New Year's I just spent with a friend here. Um, we watched a movie and just kind of hung out and did a review of the year together, and um, said cheers to the new year um, and all the, the, the church bells were ringing and there were illegal fireworks in the streets and people were hooting and hollering out their windows. Um, it was quite nice, but not for, not for too long. So I could go to bed. <laughs> um, yeah, I, that's, that, that was my holidays. I don't, I'm a little apprehensive about the new year. Um, I've been letting the last few days be a little bit gentle. Um, gentle transition because I don't want to put burdens and expectations on myself that I can't follow through on. Um, and I really want to build up new habits and make sure that I'm setting new intentions that I'm actually going to follow through on. So I'm, I've been giving myself a couple of days to ease into the year before I really try to <laughs> make some decisions about what this year is going to be about. So that's, that's where I am currently in terms of the new year. Um, I will, I don't know who all has gone, but um, I will pass to my mother, Victoria, if she hasn't gone yet. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Hello. Uh, happy New Year, everybody. Um, yeah, I think Beatrice has given an excellent report of our um, antics during the holidays. And it was, um, it was really nice. It was the only problem is I became addicted to spending my days with her on Zoom. And um, when she very abruptly disappeared completely, <laughs> um, it couldn't be reached by text or telephone. <laughs> um, that was kind of a shock because then we went back to the, um, our usual detente. No, no, it's not. <laughs> It's not that bad, um, but it was, no, it was really wonderful. And, um, but I think that was, that was the, um, the difference that then when the holidays subsided, then I realized we weren't actually together, but I'm glad to see you here. Hello. Um, it's wonderful to see all of you again in the new year. And um, I'm, yeah, I'm also apprehensive about the new year. So that's, I was feeling really, really positive yesterday. And then I woke up today feeling just terrorized by everything. So I don't know what's happening. I'm in a very unsettled state. So I will pass to um, Hanali. Thank you, Victoria. I'm Hanali. I'm in Johannesburg. And I had a quite a quiet Christmas and New Year. It was very, very gentle, and that's how I wanted to do the transition. And also very creative. On New Year's Day, I did vision boarding, and um, because I'm involved in so many different initiatives, just putting them all together in one and drawing them was such, it was really beautiful. And just to send good energy into it and just to be with it was really great. So I'm deeply grateful for such a gentle time. And I'm excited about the coming season, whatever it brings. And I just feel it now in my neck as well. And I received incredible good news on New Year's Day as well, a complete surprise. So I'll just let that flow carry me through whatever is arising at this time. And I'm passing to Heidi. I first passed to Lucinda and then I... I... So as I said, I invited her because we reconnected uh, about two or three days ago. 
four days ago, more or less. And we did training about 10 years ago. And so we were quite connected. And she also came to see me once here with her husband and father four years ago, five years ago, six years ago. I don't remember, more or less. But over to you. <laughs> You need to unmute yourself. You need to unmute yourself. Thank you. It's so, so great to be everybody. Um, I think it was f at least five years ago, Heidi. I, yeah. Um, but um, I'm uh, Lucinda and I'm in right now, I'm in New Hampshire in the United States, looking out at snow. Um, I'm actually closer to Brooklyn than you'd think. I live from, I live in Stamford, Connecticut, which is maybe 30 miles from New York City, 25. Um, but we're here because my father um, passed in April and it's a big transition year. Um, and uh, so he, that we are in a family house, which is a summer house. So we're a little chilly, but it's, it's much less COVID here, but much more uh, Trump country. So we're just trying to see where very much in transition, trying to see where we feel we live, what we're going to do, because our last five or six years was really devoted to my father, who died at 100. Um, so that said, we had a, a lovely, sweet Christmas. My son and his wife are in Minnesota, so we haven't seen them since my father's 100th birthday a year ago. Um, but my daughter has moved nearer us, and we had uh, a sweet, quiet Christmas here with her. Um, uh, with a lot of snow and then uh, four, three days later she went home and then the next day she was in the hospital with an appendix and appendicitis so somehow this year is about getting rid of superfluous things that we don't need um, she's fine she's recovering and home again um, so uh, I spent the new year um, really wishing for really trying to I'm so glad to be with you all because trying to set intentions for really a it's a new world for me a lot of my life revolved around um, my father and he lived in the town that I lived in and so we're saying now what now really really what and uh, well things don't look really uh, good for our democracy um, and COVID I'm just very I'm loving being with people who are trying to evolve and uh, set intentions for uh, being a force of good in the world. So I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thank you. So up to me, I went to see a friend uh, for, for lunch on Christmas and also on uh, New Year's Eve. And then my life is like always and we had almost always nice weather. So to be outside and do something in the garden, it's it's just wonderful. Now for three or four days, it's really raining. But still, this morning there was so much sun, I could have uh, breakfast outside, you know? And this is, ha, that's wonderful. As for the rest, I'm very much preoccupied too about what is happening, especially for democracy in our countries. Not so much about Corona, but much more about uh, all the uh, side effects, let's say, and also about the vaccination, which for me is, I, I say it a little bit uh, brusque, but for me is an attempt to genocide, because it's really not secure and we don't know. We, if we are like animals in the, in the lab when we, when we want to, when we uh, have to do it. I, I'm sure I won't do it. I have a good immune system. I'm working on it for 25 years with supplements, with everything. And I don't want to anything. But this is a long topic, and I don't think we should talk about that here. We can talk about it in private if if you like. I'm I went down the rabbit hole in all the informations and still getting new ones, and you know, whoa. And I think it's a very interesting year, and in some level, I'm very curious how the things will develop. Because for me, we seem to be in a sort of impasse in a, in a one-way street without exit. And so how will, how will the world manage to get to some sense or 
to something which is livable for everybody. But that's uh, not the topic for today. Topic for today is personal intention. And what do we plan to do? Or what do to do or whatever? And then what intention comes out of this desire of being in the world this year? And I give over to who has uh, already some idea about that. Go ahead, you have to. Do you hear? Lucina, you have to unmute and then talk. <laughs> Good, I, I'm going to jump in here, but uh, I, I um, spent the last couple of days leaning into intentions and this is something that um, actually been doing for a very long time on New Year's, but trying to combine with my training in feminine power by asking what I want to create and contribute, as well as express and experience. Um, combining that with, I've, I'm really making a transition to writing. Uh, I closed, I was an opera director for many years, and then I closed that because I was kind of a kept woman you don't make much money <laughs> and we had financial difficulties. So I've been running a piano studio for 16 years and closed that in March because of COVID, but also because if I'm really honest, I was getting very bored with myself, not so much the music, but just bored with myself. So as I said, this is a transition year. So I'm on many levels, think that I'm, I'm intending, well, last year was a year of contraction, I'm putting out an intention of expansion, of uh, deep listening, and uh, radiance keeps coming to me. I don't know whether that's through vigor and health or radiant thinking or thinking outside the box, but, but um, uh, I don't know, I'm very much a community person and I don't seem to have one right now. So I'm glad to find you all. Um, but um, I'm setting a, an intention for this expansion. I think it's going to be, I'm finishing up a book that I keep coming the cropper of, of, of actually sending it out and querying it. So I'm gonna be having uh, beta readers this next, I'm sending the books out next week. Um, and then trying to find an agent and a publisher, uh, go that route for a little while um, and starting a new book. I've got a writing group. So uh, my hands sweat when I actually put out the intention and say, I really wanna take a stand to make a transition to being a writer. And also continue, I'm, I, I uh, advocate for, um, with a, a group called Results and other anti-racist groups for poverty, you know, advocate at the national level. So uh, to continue to contribute for, uh, to a more equitable world. So I think that's, there's a lot, um, but that pretty much sums it up. So that's me. And I ask, I guess I'm gonna say, uh, will you stand with me uh, as I, take a stand for radiant expansion and listening and uh, taking a stand as a writer in the world. Thank you. I would like to have a minute or so to, to of stillness, just to see what's emerging. <laughs> Lucinda, is, it already bubbled up and, and I, I, I realize for me it's, it's, um, it's just a need for stillness before talking.
Is it your turn now, Gertrude, or do you give over first to somebody else? I'm not quite, this is still a work in progress. <laughs> I'm realizing that, that um, yeah, I, I need to spend, again, the, the stillness that, that resonated with me, but I think it's a, I need to like a longer, <laughs> a couple more days. Um, no, but what's, what's starting to bubble for me, um, and I was actually talking to my mother about this last night, um, I think, I think I need to put some very like committed intentions into this year about uh, self-compassion and rest and self-care and kind of internal reflection. Um, so, uh, I mean, most of you know, but Lucinda, since you're new, I, I'll just give a little background, which is, uh, you know, last year I um, finished my, my graduate degree, my master's degree, and uh, had a lot of really major shifts for my career and for my artistry and for everything. Like just a lot happened last year, despite the fact that we were in a pandemic. Um, and it's been really exciting and there's been a lot of new opportunities. And I think, I trust that those actually will continue this year. So I don't feel like I need to be doing a lot of putting out to get, to get those things to happen. I think now I can just ride the momentum of what has happened last year, um, as long as I keep, you know, giving of myself. Um, but I also feel like I've been giving of myself a little bit too much um, for many years. And uh, yeah, I've just been running and running like on a treadmill for years and not stopping. Um, and I don't wanna stop and I know that I'll keep running, but I think I want to, you know, get off the treadmill every once in a while and have a glass of water, you know, and uh, metaphorically speaking and, and take a break and um, check in with myself. A lot of, a lot of my work is about holding space for other people in grief and holding space for other people and creating work for other people and facilitating. Um, and I always let my my heart and my soul and my process come secondary to that. And I think I wanna flip that this year or at least balance it to some degree. So yeah, that's, that's the beginning of that thought. I think there might be some more specific ways to do that, but um, yeah, but even just this gentleness of these last few days, I've been trying to do a little bit less the last few days. And I think there's something about that, that my, my body and my mind are telling me, this is, this is how you're starting your year. Maybe this is how you also live your year um, with a little bit more quiet. So um, that's it for now. I just want to share, first of all, <clears throat> that when you were speaking about the topic, I felt the energy running around on my back down, from the top down. So it, fe it felt like whatever our intentions are, it's already happening in, in our beingness. And for me, my intention this year, on a personal level, is I've planted a lot of seeds in the last few years. and. It's to embody those seeds and to nurture them and to nourish them into being, into manifestation. And so it's like three, four different secret gardens busy growing, and but they're actually all part of the same bigger picture. And I feel a lot of peace when I even speak about it. And again, lots of energy moving and being here with you, woman is always an incredible blessing to have this feminine energy as a safety net, but also as a holding space. And it, my intention for that is to really help anchoring that even more this year for all of us, whatever our intentions are and what we co-create here together and what unfolds in the world and our place in that. 
but I do feel a lot of hope that whatever it is I desire and intend is part of a bigger wave that's busy coming through in the world, which we may not yet see what it is already. And it's just to ride that wave of that was also created last year. So like you said, like you said, Beatrice, mine is the same. It's like just riding on that wave, not having to do so much and just holding the vision and embodying it and being with it and uh, feeling it. So it's like a romance. And there are so many, so many synchronicities coming up, even from what you said, Lucinda, and I won't go into the detail now, but I love the synchronicities coming together. And I think my intention furthermore is to be um, aware of and open and receptive to these synchronicities and to follow the flow in 2021. Thank you, I'm complete. One of the first things that came up uh, is meeting Hanneli in Switzerland. <laughs> so that's, that's a given for this year. And um, I think I'm, I'm more and more interested in healing, not so much like the physical healing uh, also, and a specific person that needs some of that. Um, but it's more like healing from the inside or healing the, yeah, relationships, society, planet, whatever. So really like, what is the secret ingredients that that causes healing. Yeah. And it has a lot to do with centeredness, really like coming from that, um, not from the automatic uh, response reaction, but really coming from that sac uh, sacred place. Um, so yeah, exploring the quantum field, that's one thing and, and having it manifest in the world. So this from wave to matter, this is interesting transformation. And one of the more, more physical <laughs> is um, we are going to sell our house, which I inherited, but 200 kilometers away where nobody of our family wants to live. So we are selling that. And it's like graduation after high school. It's like not what do you want to study, but um, where do you want to live? What is, <laughs> what kind of living do you want to have? What place is it? Like our daughter said, come to Hamburg because they are living there. So I don't know. <laughs> it's really like, it's almost this, this, I could do anything. I could live anywhere. So what is it? And, and really to get what's perfect for, yeah, what's the best place for my husband and, and me to, to move to. So, so creation and finding whatever how it occurs i don't care <laughs> the wonderful place with an atelier for him with yeah garden 
and just close to people that, yeah, where resonance is there or family or whatever that might be. So you will know, I tell you. <laughs> so it's it's um, in the in the making. And the third thing is really being independent from a specific place. So we could find a place where we work and have it online, like that he's doing online courses in photography and me in appreciation. <laughs> so like not being dependent anymore from the place where you have to work. So that that is, so just birds. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the courses, this is like this week is going to start with my first, um, recording that's the very clear <laughs> it's on my to-do list already it's not just an intention yeah and 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 like coming he said self-care i i would even go deeper like being centered in in this deeper place and coming from there and working from there and loving and living from there yeah self-care included i think that's not excluded <laughs> from that place yeah And one word comes to my mind is worryless. Just yeah. A worryless year. Healing. Finding a wonderful place to live being independent. Um, both my husband and I will turn 80 this year, which makes us old. And listening to you, I noticed that we sort of have really materialized all our intentions. We are living a lot stressless, with less stress. We take care of each other and of ourselves. So how I can keep my space which after over 55 years of marriage has had lots of changes. On the other hand, my husband had to go to the dentist yesterday, Sunday, uh, because obviously in, this is, that was my diagnosis and luckily I was right. He was gnashing his teeth so hard at night that he got a neurologic uh, pain and then the tooth, one tooth, but. It, he had an x-ray and everything and of course you only can go to an emergency doctor on a Sunday and we have this heavy lockdown so you are not supposed to leave the house at all um, and he was very nervous he's always very nervous when he goes to the dentist but his teeth are all right so uh, when he came back he was a lot more relaxed and I noticed that 
I wasn't as upset as I used to be when he was upset. So I noticed it was his being upset and it was his stress. Uh, and I didn't want to be enhancing it. So I, I stayed in my, um, in my space and listened to him, as you mentioned, deep listening. So what was really making him uneasy because he's a person who wants to have control. And of course, being 80, you don't have control over your body that much anymore. And I started reading uh, fantasy books in uh, United Kingdom, urban slang, police slang, Ben Aranovich, the London Rivers. And all of a sudden I noticed well, I'm a tra trained translator and I noticed I don't know every second word is new. So I wrote it, I, I marked it, I wrote it down, I looked it up and all of a sudden I noticed how much I enjoyed just keeping my gray cells busy again with new, new words and new, uh, a, new, a different attitude on life because it's so different from Austria, the way, uh, Londoners live, particularly when they are of a mixed race. So I really can recommend these books to escape whatever is around you, because when I read it, I forget everything else. And sometimes this is quite convenient. So my intentions actually are to continue meeting what comes with humor, and we do laugh a lot, my husband and I, much too easily maybe, but I just start to giggle most of the time without any antidepressants. I just, I just, I just giggle a lot more than I did all my life. I was always a very serious person. And I'd like to keep that up. Uh, the expansion and the radiance is something that's, yeah, should I call it natural, that comes natural or that is really a necessity for my life to radiate and to expand whatever, my mind, my heart. So I'm, I'm just, yeah, my intentions are to keep going, <laughs> no matter how long and to keep going merrily, worryless, as Gertrude said. And yeah, and to find my own uh, attitude towards what is going on in the media. I don't listen as much to the media as we never before did I listen so little to the media. And we see the intentions, <laughs> people, experts uh, talking what should be done. And uh, then you see an insert. He is somebody who sells testing equipment or vaccination. So it's, uh, you have to look closely what's going on and to the details in the back. That's what I do, what we do. And I hope we manage this next year. Yeah us happily as much as we can. Thank you. And talking to you is one of the red threads that goes through my, yeah, I'm always looking forward to the next talk because I know, and it's the feeling that you are all over the world that makes it so special to me that uh, it's not just my little country or Europe. No, it's all over the world. And that's, that's really great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Also, as I have heard, Hanely, you make it to go to Switzerland. So Africa will be uh, left out in the future. <laughs> okay. Only a part of the world. Uh, yeah, then more in the northern part. But she takes her African soul with her. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. 
Yeah, but it will be a by location. So it will be in Africa sometimes as well. Okay, good. <laughs> we won't lose the internationality. That's good. Uh, Victoria, do you want to go before me? Um, not really, but I will. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said in the check-in, I'm I I um, woke up in a kind of tumultuous state, so I'm not quite. I'm still a little bit disoriented. I'm glad to be here because um, now I feel radiantly and merrily <laughs> grounded. <laughs> I just, I love all the, um, have you been writing down all the words, Beatrice? She's a um, Beatrice guys writing. Can you see the themes from the I know. Victoria? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wish I felt like that. Um, so the, the um, all of these adjectives, I, I would like, to include them in, in my own intentions. Um, so after, after our meeting, I'm gonna ask Beatrice to send me a list of adjectives. Um, I think I, I felt yesterday, yesterday was the first time I really took a real um, Ausflug, um, a, a, a <laughs> I don't know what you call it in English. Um, and it, it was so jarring for me. I felt like a convalescent um, coming out of the hospital after a long stay because I've, I've really stayed at home um, uh, without going out except once or twice for a walk at the ocean for months and months and months. And, um, and what I realized to my shock was that I prefer to be at home. So facing the new year is, is sort of intriguing in that sense that I feel like I really um, that it, at the end of the day, it didn't have anything to do with the pandemic that I, I went into a kind of um, hermitage in my life. And um, I've been exploring the interior world more and flashing back sort of to my childhood, I realized that that's totally who I was as a child. I, I was very introverted and, and um, alone, I was anyway alone most of the time um, as a child growing up. And so it's it's intriguing to me. It's a return to who I was um, at my earliest time of my life. And um, so in terms of intentions, I, I think I just want to be open to transformation, whatever that may mean. And I think maybe some of the, the kind of sadness I'm feeling today has to do with the fact that it does feel like a turning point. Well, kind of like Gertrude said, um, graduating from high school. Um, or no, that was, wait. Well, I don't know, everyone seems to be, yeah. But also Lucinda um, about the, um, your, the passing of your father mm -hmm. and the big, the big sort of cataclysm, the most recent cataclysm in my life was that my mother, um, passed away, uh, tomorrow will be two years, but it still feels like it was yesterday. And um, it's, I dream of her every single night without fail. She, she comes in every night to, um, I don't know whether it's to torment me or to comfort me, <laughs> or I'm not quite sure what her intentions are. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I feel like I'm rambling. Um, I guess to, 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 to sort of embrace this turning point and, um, and to, to be courageous and see where it leads and be, be open to the fact that it may be a complete transformation. It may be a return to who I really was at my, you know, before the world sort of took over. Um, so, so maybe that's why I'm apprehensive, but I guess if I looked at the glass half full, it would be really exciting. And now the sun is really making a statement. So maybe, maybe I have to, um, but, but I love my favorite. Yeah, the radiant, there we go. So there's the radiance. Um, <laughs> but I also love um, Moni, when Monia said, Mer we'll go along merrily. I immediately thought of that, that children's song, you know, merrily we roll along. 
And I thought, what a great way to start the new year. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so thank you everybody for all those great words. And um, so Heidi, you're, you're waiting till last again. So please take over before I ramble myself into oblivion. I just have to say, Victoria, the image of both your star over your table, the inner and outer light, I mean, it was the image of transformation right there. It was really inspiring. Well, that's, you can thank um, nature for that or whatever. <laughs> but thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. You've got the star as well. <laughs> no, no, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 So there it is. Thank you. Enlightened. <laughs> yeah, for me, I, I, I haven't thought a lot about it, but I think there are both sides, the external world and the internal world. And the world, I'm, as I said, very much preoccupied because I have grown up in a place which was surrounded by East Germany. And so, and I went often in East Germany, and so I understood what totalitarianism is a little bit by own experience. And now I have friends for the ex is Germany and they say in East Germany, it wasn't as bad as it is now in Germany. And then, oops, I think, you know. So I want to explore these things. And when I talked with Lucinda lately, I realized where the fear comes from, from uh, experience in childhood, when there was the crisis of um, Cuba and the crisis of uh, Kennedy being killed. It came to me one night because I was really in fear and I did the practices and asked, where does it come from? And I realized that I was completely alone uh, in, in my room. Only my parents came to tell me these things. And then I saw them in fear. And when you're old or so, or, or so, then seeing your parents in fear is not really reassuring. So I think my reaction on that might be um, too much, you know, because of that. But th I think there is also some realism. And so I, I try to, 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 to find out what it is. I'm seeking for the truth in, in many ways, the outside truth and the, the inside truth. And it's an interesting time in this uh, way. I, I somehow feel that life makes sense now more because before I thought, oh, now I'm getting older and blah, 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 blah. And now I think maybe I have something to do. Maybe there is something waiting for me to do, to, which really makes sense. And so I'm wondering how that unfolds. So as for intention, I could only say, I have the intention to be patient, which is not easy for me, and <laughs> to <laughs> let it arrive, what will be the thing I am about to, to do and continue with what I'm doing and trying to self-care enough to not get crazy by, uh, you know, by getting too much worried about these things. And but the, the strange thing is also that I'm able to enjoy little things more now than before. That's uh, somehow uh, astonishing, you know, because yeah. when you are sort of reduced uh, in your normal routine, then you begin to, also I'm not really a lot reduced, only a little bit, but I see that the energy of these times are changing me and I'm grateful for that. What I thought now, if we want to ask questions to each other, that would be nice or um, also ask uh, if you need help, what could we do for each other who who has a need of something and, and so on that I would propose to do with the last minutes we have. I have the need that you come back every two weeks and we talk together. <laughs> it's really for me, it's so important to talk with other people who are of a certain I don't want to say level necessarily, but understanding or way of you, human. Or I, I, you, all these adjectives, find some more, Beatrice, <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know. I think every adjective I use is sort of uh, not really saying what I want to say, but I hope you understand what I mean. 
really it's great to, to, to me from the outside it's it's just coming in it, it feels like people who are moving from a uh, a depth of being and it's really really lovely I'm, I'm honored to be here and I did want to know where, where are you living Victoria I'm in um, San Diego, California. Got it, okay. Thank you. Which is part of the problem. <laughs> Beatrice, Beatrice, Beatrice is, uh, what I mean, as you probably gathered, she's, Beatrice is my daughter and, um, and my only family member left. Um, uh, not li literally alive, but, but alive in terms of relationships. So I'm, I actually was, I was literally on the verge of moving to New York when the pandemic hit. It was already, the apartment was already um, secured and it was, everything was ready to roll and then the pandemic happened. So I'm still here. I love how the question of where, where do we live and how, you know, is, is, you know, we're like, we're like um, billiard balls, you know, just being knocked here and there. Where is our next assignation? Where's our next assignment? So cool. Well, this year, where do we live has become a lot more important <laughs> and a lot more part of identity. Um, because home is everything this year, whatever home you have, and it has to be that way. And sometimes that's a great blessing and sometimes that's a great curse, but it's, yeah. A lot of changes too. We moved our daughter out of Queens in March. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of moving within this, so, but yes. I love the colors behind you. <laughs> yeah, and for me, it's nature as well, like being in contact with nature, being able mm -hmm. to go out. Um, yeah, just five minutes from the house, there's uh, the meadows and so, and some little woods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to, go, to go out even if the weather is not too bad <laughs> not too good to yeah and and this is like a luxury and before you took it for granted mm -hmm. yeah well, I think beyond me. what Heidi said beyond um, meeting here it, it's just to to be able to share it and and to it, it's not I need help for this or that. So it's more like, yeah, meeting you again, guy, <laughs> girls. Um, this would be, yeah. And I'm happy we we said okay every second week, so we don't have to think about when do we meet again and da 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 da. So it's just a given, <laughs> and I like that. There's um, no other occasion I could meet you. <laughs> I'm wondering uh, about the difference uh, because you mentioned nature and surroundings because Vienna now is a different city. Uh, with the lockdown, everything is, you can't compare it as to what it was before and actually nobody wants it back the way it was before. So, um, and to find some middle or some, yeah, of course, our tourism is ruined and all the coffee shops are closed and all the restaurants and all the theaters. And so we have no culture and Austria is for culture. Amazingly, I don't miss it. <laughs> it's, uh, so this is what I really intend to find what way of living in Vienna mm. will evolve, will emerge. 
and that's what that's what I find really interesting. And if it's if politics will hold back, because right now they are making small change, attacking each other, and it's uh, yeah, it's not very pleasant. But uh, there are still a couple of people who seem to be rational. And on these, I do hope, put all my hopes, they <laughs> may just continue that way. Uh, lucky, unfortunately, those are not, uh, their health isn't very good. So they have to fight two, on two fronts, like Ken Wilbur always did. So he was always sick, desperately sick, and uh, still he continued his work. So this is what I'm hoping for, that people, even when they are in a bad health, in bad health, they, yeah, get the resilience to be rational. That's what I'm hoping for, for this year. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to tell you beautiful lady something that happened the last week because there are so many of you are musicians and artists and the likes. In this past week, the synchronicity was incredible that I met two men who are involved, one in Finland and another one in the Netherlands. And they are both busy with organizations that are bringing together the cultural side that we are losing out because of lockdowns and the likes currently all over the world. For example, like I have a consulting company and I'm sharing happy hours with organizations as a way of supporting the staff with the emotional, mental, physical, spiritual well-being. And what they do is for such salons, we call it salon, is just to take people out of the scenario that they currently are in, that their thought structures and their mindsets, and just for an hour, give them something completely different. And what they are doing both these two different organizations, and they're doing so well that the one in Finland wants to now go to Central Europe and they're actually looking for somebody to run it for them from there, is that they bring artists and musicians and writers and poets into these happy, like our sessions. So they've got organizations that they do consulting for like I do, and then they bring the, the artists, the culture to them for an hour or so once a week or once a day or whatever they decide. So I just thought it was incredible creative thinking to, and people earn money through that. So the artists and the likes earn money through it. So it's we bring, and it, and now as you're speaking Monia about Austria, in terms of what Austria has been, it's now go, go, can make Austria go more global because of online events like that. So it's like our world, if you, and listen, you started putting in the word expansion. So it's like our worlds can now expand if we choose to think differently about these things. And we, before, if I wanted to, I love to come to Austria and because I was named after an opera singer who found her fame, South African one, found her fame in Austria and in Vienna and those places to be there and to feel what she felt because I was named after her. But now I can, even though I'm stuck in South Africa because of what's happening, I can in that way have a little bit of a, a taste of it and a feeling of it. So I think there are many possibilities now that's opening us for us from a global level. Mm. Thank I'd you, like Emily, to that know yeah. more about that. Sorry. I'll, I'll, to... I'll share the I'll share the both the organizations' names with you. Yeah. Because my husband is photographer in the theater. Mm -hmm. And um, so maybe yeah. we'll see. Maybe that something's coming out of that. And even my own, even our own happy hours that we are sharing with organizations. And we're actually busy with three academic studies. And one of them is with organizations. And then it'll be wonderful to bring all of you into something like co-create something extraordinary for people from all over the world in that way give them access, to come back to this deeply cultural beauty and the beauty of life itself within us and outside of us. I wanted to share something which I already told Monia about the internet uh, 
proliferation of culture. I saw a, a film uh, about Venice. Venice was empty. And then La Fenice, the opera house, they did the New Year's Eve concert. And they took away all seats where normally the people are. They put there the orchestra. The choir was on the stage and they did the concert and everybody was masked except the two soloists. And it was ghostly. When the choir has to sing with masks mm. and you know, it's, first of all, it's unhealthy at maximum, you know, but to see that for me, it was like a, you know, um, Geisterbahn, uh, <laughs> how do you say it in English? You know, you enter in, a, in, in um, oh God, how, how do you say it? You cannot say it. When you go into, into um, ghost things, you know, for, for, for fun, but, there are these things in right, the yeah, fun house. Yeah. yeah. It, it felt I couldn't I couldn't watch it. I watched it a little bit. I wanted to see it. only the face of the soprano and the tenor you could see when they sang, and that's oh, awful. So I don't want to have this sort of culture. That's for sure. So, <laughs> but we have in some way we have to continue with that. And I'm really a little bit preoccupied because the artists there is little protest. They seem to accept the death of their of their uh, work without any you know i don't know we will see how that works out but the singing also in school singing is now the worst thing you can do so already kissing, the singing culture kissing, is lost kissing what kissing is the worst kissing thing is the worst. <laughs> 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 everything forbid. but I already when I came to Italy 30 something years ago everybody still sang that's not the case anymore and with these as if singing which is the most natural way of expression human expression will be denigrated as dangerous or something and this is also a part of my preoccupation anyway uh, I, ha it, I have a lovely lovely friend who who meets in a, a gazebo it's one of these uh, little kind of houses where a band might be and and uh out in a park with five other women and they had to start it because it was getting too dark but they they do gregorian chant oh, no. outside mm -hmm. and then she also organized in a parking garage with older people where people were all standing empty parking garage and good good resonance of a singing of Christmas songs. So she, I think there are creative ways, outdoor singing, uh, because it, it feels, does feel like something deep is lost within us if we can't sing together. Yeah. Beautiful. I, I have another appointment <laughs> coming up. And so could we wrap up? Let's, I want to thank Heidi and, and everyone for including me in today. Thank you very much. Thank you for showing up. Mm. Is there still some something you want to go on or do we do a short check out, a short appreciation round maybe? How do you do hearts? Yeah, I, I begin. I appreciate that you are here deeply, every one of you, and I feel really a, a connection, uh, which seems to be personal, but when I look into the round, I don't know Hanali personal yet, but it seems to me as if I know you for, a, for ages, and so Victoria, and so Beatrice. That's almost no, no difference, I would say, you know? It doesn't feel like a difference between having seen a person from cop to f cop, from head <laughs> to feet, <laughs> or only this piece, yeah. So, yes, you all, and also the few women who are missing today, and thank you. I give over to Monia. I appreciate feeling myself and my heart expand whenever I talk to you. So you are heart expanders, all of you. <laughs> And this is what I wouldn't miss for a lot of things. Yeah. 
and Victoria in her <laughs> splendor of enlightenment. Maybe you could move your head a little to the right side and you really have a halo. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, as the Buddha says, we are all enlightened and we just forgot about it. Thank you. And I give over to Lucinda. Well, I, I, uh, I'm looking outside across a snowy field it's, and uh, realizing how important, you know, in terms of where I live is, is having the nature around. I suppose my little house in Connecticut, but which I also love. But I, uh, I uh, deeply appreciate this um, conversation, and it feels like it flows at um, like a deep underground river, and it's beautiful to connect with at that level. So, uh, heart level and and full being levels, wisdom level. So, thank you. Are you giving over to somebody else? Oh, am I? Oh, I don't know. Am I? Um, I'm giving over to Gertrude. Thank you. And uh, it's very, really, very nice to meet you today. <laughs> very first time. And it feels like, yeah, you, you've been here quite a while. <laughs> Doesn't feel foreign. And um, I appreciate appreciate our rounds. Like it, every second week we meet, and even if we don't know what's going to happen, it's always a good and deep conversation. And and I really, I'm happy to have that this year again. And. Um, the intentions that you shared, even if I don't remember each and every one, but I have this this feeling, <laughs> this um, and uh, whenever anybody needs a refreshment, then please speak up and have it share it here and yeah to be held <laughs> by the group. It feels feels good to have said it here and mm -hmm. put it in the space and yeah, it's now <laughs> from wave to matter on its way. Mm -hmm. so have a wonderful evening and a year full of miracles. And I pass on to Hanali. Thank you, Gertra. I'm deeply appreciative of life itself in this moment as you are embodying it all and being here with me. And the feeling in my cells is joyous about it. And I'm really deeply grateful for the space, Heidi, that you've been keeping for so many years for us. And all of you here, you are just part of my body, you're part of me in everything that I do and that I can take this energy with me that we co-create every week, every bi-week. And it's like time dissolves when we are together. Thank you for that. And I pa pass on to Beatrice. Um, yes, I, I echo everything that everyone's saying about this group. Um, I remember, I don't know, in one of the conversations with my mother, um, especially as we were thinking about the holidays, but also thinking about this year and about Zoom and everything, we were um, amazed to, to kind of realize that, that we have gained so much family this year. Um, while we have um, lost some connection with our biological family, we have gained so much chosen family. Um, and I count all of you as among that, that family. Um, it's just so wonderful to, to feel so deeply connected to people, yeah, that I've never met that live on the other side of the globe. <laughs> but um, but, but I, I really do feel really together with all of you. And um, 
and I'm grateful for that and I'm grateful for being included and I look forward to the many conversations we have this year and all that we unpack together and and mine all the wisdom that we mine um, from that that deep river as Lucinda called it um, so that that is my checkout gratitude to all of you and I pass to my mama <laughs> such a difficult act to follow. Um, well, I will defer to my radiant light here <laughs> as my checkout, <laughs> for which I claim no responsibility. Um, so just, uh, I think gratitude is the key word here. And I'm grateful for all of you and I'm grateful for the light um, physically and metaphysically. And um, I look forward to the year feeling supported by, by all of you. It's, it's, a, it's actually, I'm feeling so much better now than I did um, when I woke up this morning. So thank you for that. I really wanted to turn around this morning and go back into, into my hole. So um, the, the sun and you have brought me out with the sun. So thank you. Yeah, thank you all and have a good day or good evening and we meet in two. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>